Are you curious as to what order you should put your effects in? Well, today, hopefully I can help demystify that question for you and show you some cool ways of using the effects stack inside of On One Photo Raw. So let's go ahead and jump into On One. All right, here we are inside of On One Photo Raw. And as you can see, I have an image open in front of me. And let me just make sure that this is the unedited version of the image. This is pretty cool already, but let's go ahead and take a look at what happens with our effects. So here we are on the effects module and I have a few effects already applied, but I turned them all off. So now we're gonna go ahead and build these up. Now, what I want you to know is the first effect in your layer stack, the one that's at the bottom, this is the one that impacts your image first, all right? Now, when I turn this on, you're gonna see that it is just this over the top crazy texture. And I wanted this so that way you can see as I start to build how this works. So the next one is gonna be a blur. And when I turn this one on, you can see it blurs everything underneath. And then the next one will be a split tone. Now, you can't really see that one right now. So what I'm gonna do is crank up the amount in the shadows, and I'm also gonna crank up the amount in the highlights. And I'll pull this over to the shadows and over to the right, and you can see that everything that's blurred is getting this effect. Now, if I turn off the blur, you're gonna see that the impact of this um, split tone effect is just applying to, or it, it's applying to everything, all right? And it's applying to the texture. Now, what I'm gonna do is make this like a really crazy color. Uh, and I need this to be like very, very bright. So that way you can see the effect, all right? So we're gonna go like that. And what I'm gonna do is take the split tone and I'm going to put it underneath the texture layer. All right. Now, what you see is the texture layer is not being impacted by the split tone because the texture layer is on top. So the texture layer is actually covering the split tone color, which is impacting the image. If I were to turn off the texture layer, you can see it is impacting our image. However, it's not impacting our texture because I applied it on top of the split tone. The effect that is higher on the stack is the effect that you're going to see the most. All right. Now, if I put a blur on top of this, you can see I'm blurring everything. But if I move the texture layer on top of the blur, I'm no longer blurring the texture layer. I'm only blurring the image and the split tone coloring. Now, if I were to bring the split tone all the way up to the top on top of the texture, now I'm applying the split tone to the texture layer. So hopefully that's making sense. Now, if I play or apply a black and white uh, effect to this layer stack, then what you're going to see is the entire layer stack turn into a black and white image. And it doesn't matter where I put the, the, well, the image itself will be impacted. However, if I were to bring the black and white underneath the split tone, now the split tone takes precedence. So hopefully that makes sense that as you move your layers around, these things are going to start to interact with each other differently. In this example here, I have no blend modes applied, and I also don't have any of the apply to color ranges where I could apply this to just the highlights, the midtones, because that is also going to impact the way that your layers or your stacks, uh, your effect stacks start to work. For today's purposes and just understanding the layer stacks, I want to teach you the foundations and in later videos, we'll go into some of the more deep things. So now I want to show you some practical uses. Using a snapshot here, we're going to click on 
practical use number one, which I'm calling the mystic forest. Now, if I were to turn off all of these, you can see that I start to build up the overall image. So starting with the texture layer, we're going to go ahead and turn it on and see what that does to the image. As you can see, it darkens the image as a whole. It puts these little scars on there. Uh, you can barely tell that they're even there. But then I go with a blur and the blur is blurring out everything except for this little area right here and this path leading you all the way up to this broken or knocked over tree. And then we have bleach bypass and bleach bypass again, the blur is still applied and the texture layer is still applied and the bleach bypass is affecting both of those effects because it is on top. And then I applied a weather to add in a little bit of fog and make it look a little mystical. And that's what you are seeing right here in the final result. Then we have the painting. And what I'm gonna do is turn on the texture layer first and you can see it just brightens the image overall. And then I'm gonna throw on the photo filter and that brings a yellow tint to the image and then the bleach bypass just really brings out the punch of those highlights and the brighter areas of the image. And then I'm going to apply a blur to make this look more like a painterly effect. Now, if I were to bring this blur all the way to the bottom, I get a different look. This may be a look that you're going for, but what's, what's happening here is the texture layer, the photo filter and the bleach bypass are all affecting the blur layer. Or maybe I bring the photo filter underneath to the very bottom. Now I get an even different look or another different look. And these are all very similar in the end result just because I'm not changing any of the settings. Now, if I were to turn off one of these, so we'll turn off bleach bypass, that's a different look. And ultimately, the item that is at the top of your layer stack is going to be impacting every other effect that you add here. So if I were to throw in another layer or another effect here, and let's say I put on a border, okay? So I have a border layer that is put on and I'm gonna put it underneath the photo filter layer. You can see that the yellow tint from the photo filter layer is impacting my border. If I were to turn that off, you can see that this gets a little bit brighter. And if I turn it back on, it gets this yellow tint, all right? And then the next practical is going to be what I call the glowing forest. And the same concept is true here. So the only difference that you will see in this one that I didn't do in the other two practical exercises or practical uses is if I turn on the settings icon, you can see I have this applied to the highlights. This glow is applied to the highlights only. And if I turn this off, you can see that it's a dramatic difference in the image overall. And then the same thing with this glow, I have this one applied to the shadows. So if I turn that one off, that's a different look. And that's just to show you that as you start to apply some of these other options that are available to you, you're going to get a very different look. So even if I just hover through these, you'll see that I'm going to get a different look with my image every single time that I change this. And this is where the possibilities really start to open up for you. And the best way that I can encourage anyone to learn this is just to experiment and have fun with it. Now, let me show you one last thing. Local adjustments are affected by all of your effects. Let me demonstrate what I mean by that. So I'm gonna click on paint with color and then I'm going to select a yellow. Now, when I paint this yellow, over the middle of the image. You can look at it and say, oh, okay, well, yellow showed up. Well, let me show you what happens 
when I throw on a black and white filter, it takes away all of the color. What does that tell you about local adjustments versus a, the effect module? Anything that you put into the local adjustment, it will impact the image first and then all of the effects will go on top of it. Doesn't matter what order you do it in, as soon as you start to apply effects, the local adjustments get buried underneath the effects. So you can almost think of the local adjustments as being underneath this HDR look that I added into this image. You can think of local adjustments being right down there. All right. And local adjustments always live down here. So if you happen to have an image where you say, you know what, I really want to apply a local adjustment to this image because that's what I want to do. What you're going to have to do is duplicate this layer. And then once it is duplicated, and I should probably get rid of this local adjustment for demonstration purposes, because that would not turn out very well. And now I'm going to click on the top layer here. Right click and hit new stamped layer. What this now gives me the option of once it gets done merging the layers, I can add an adjustment. I can come back to paint with color, select my yellow color, and now I am painting yellow or painting my local adjustment onto the image. Hopefully that was helpful. If it wasn't, consider rewinding the video and just rewatching. But if it was, consider smashing the like button and subscribing to get more content centered around All One Photo Raw and just photo editing in general. If you got questions, please leave it in the comment section down below. Let me know what your questions are in reference to effects. And until the next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.